what Harnack does is he, he contrasts this, this idea of a Jesus was first spirit then became flesh with what he himself refers to as, quote, the classic passage, unquote, in which he believes the original Jewish concept of the pre-existence of Jesus is to be found. This passage is 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. It's, it's a you know, text we're all very familiar with. Peter, the, the Jewish apostle chosen by Jesus, called, he called him the rock. He said, on this rock I'll build my church, stated that he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. So the contrast there is between Clement saying that Jesus is a spirit being who became a flesh being, a spirit being who became a human being, and Peter who says that he was a foreknown being. He was an individual who existed in the counsel, the plan and the purpose of God. God purposed a specific point in human history to, to raise up this man, and, and so before that he existed in the plan of God. He existed in the promise of God because God promised beforehand that this, this um, saviour was going to come. And then he, be, he appeared when he, when he became a man. When, when he actually was, was created in, in the womb of Mary. So, in Harnack's view, there's a very a sharp contrast. Something very, very uh, major has happened between Peter, First Peter, and, and Second Clement. And uh, I'll put a little, little footnote about the, um, some further comments that Harnack makes regarding the contrast between the, the Hellenic or the Greek concept of pre-existence and the, the Hebraic or Jewish one. Um, sh- shall I read it out to you? Yes. Okay, what follows is, is a quote from the History of Dogma, Volume 1, page 318. It says, according to the theory held by the ancient, ancient Jews and by the whole of the Semitic nations. Now, just to make a quick point here, you know, anybody who's been listening to your shows for a period of time is going to know that, you know, what I'm saying here, but I'm going to say it again just for the sake of emphasis in case anyone's, this might be one of the first um, podcasts they're listening to. And this is that if we're going to believe in Jesus, if we're going to call ourselves Christians or disciples of Jesus or, you know, whatever title we, we, we choose to own, we we really need to try and, understand what him and his Jewish apostles meant by the expressions that they used. And that, that involves recovering the Jewish mindset. So in other words, when Harnack's speaking about the, the Jewish and the ancient Jews and their way of looking at things, that's the way of looking at things that we need to recover if we want to be like Jesus. Because Jesus was a Jew, living among Jews, speaking in the Jewish language, using Jewish idioms of speech, and that the words that he used, whether he was speaking Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek, would have been interpreted in, in their Jewish sense. And what we, we don't want to do is think along Greek lines, because the, the, the Greek way of thinking was a way of thinking which had developed alongside the Jewish way of thinking, and, and the, the earliest church fathers were so influenced by that Greek way of thinking that it eclipsed their ability to be able to, to look at the, the Bible for what it was for a Jewish book that's and this process. Yeah, that's a really good point, Alex. Right, I'll, thank you. Um, it's actually a point that I, you know, I won't lay claim to it myself. It's, it's really the, the essence of Harnack's thesis. Yes. And as we go through this paper, um, we're going to see the outworking of this. this um, how, you know, he really very clearly explains how this happened and provides a lot of detail. So anyway, going back to this quote from History of Dogma, page um, 318. Um, the, the, the theory held by the ancient Jews and the whole of the Semitic nations, according to them, everything of real val- value that from time to time appears on earth has its existence in heaven. In other words, it exists with God. That is, God possesses a knowledge of it. So if, if the Jews spoke about something that exists in heaven, it would simply mean that God knows it didn't necessarily mean that something had to physically exist. It's like when James uh, says, every good gift comes down from heaven. You know, you could say, well, you know, I thank God for this meal. But it doesn't mean that the meal existed in heaven before it, it dropped down on earth. Yes. You're just acknowledging the fact that it's, you know, by virtue of, of God's grace that you've, you know, you've received that, that particular thing. And um, in, in the event of God's interventions with man, the main one being Jesus, it's acknowledging the fact that he existed in the mind of God. History of Dogma, page 318. Um, everything in heaven um, is so in the sense that God possesses a knowledge of it. 
and for that reason it has a real being. The old Jewish theory of pre-existence is founded on the religious idea of the omniscience or the all-knowingness of and omnipotence, in other words, the all-powerfulness of God. That God to whom the events of history do not come as a surprise, but who guides their course. He guides their course. When God predicts the future, it isn't that he's got a telescopic foresight and he's seen what's going to happen, but it is that he orchestrates history and he guides it. So when he, when he prophesies about future events, it is actually he's declaring a purpose which he is then going to guide history towards. And it's exactly the same in the case of Jesus. When God spoke through the prophets, telling, telling you know, about them about the Messiah, it wasn't that he could see this, this virtuous man who was going to rise up and then... God was going to respond to that by adopting him. It was God declaring what he was planning to do, the man that he was planning to raise up. And then, by contrast to the Jewish view, the next page, 319, um, Harnack says, according to the Hellenic, Hellenic is another word for Greek, the Hellenic conception, which has become associated with Platonism, the idea of pre-existence is independent of the idea of God. It is based on the conception of the contrast between spirit and matter. See the thing there in Clement? Spirit and matter. Yes. Yes. First spirit then became flesh. Between infinite and finite, found in the cosmos itself. In the case of all spiritual things, life in the body or flesh is at bottom an inadequate and unsuitable condition. For the spirit is eternal, the flesh is perishable. There's, there's, without going too far into it, there's a dualism there. Yes. There's a contempt for the material world. There's, there's a view that somehow manhood is unworthy of God's Messiah. He had to be more. He had to be spirit as well. Spirit being understood as, as that which is was real, really real, or permanent, or, or good. Or, so they weren't comfortable with this idea that Jesus was just a man. As if, by just a man, I think some of the users of the term just a man, they're massively underestimating um, what manhood is in God's eyes. They're, they're taking a low view of it. Which, which comes from Greek philosophy, the, he, you know, the Hebraic view of, of man's, of what, you know, what God has chosen man to be is actually quite high and lofty. So there you have it, the, the classic passage in 1 Peter 1.20, that's the one we really need to get our heads around whenever we're looking at language of pre-existence. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world. The, the, the key words, for those of you that like a bit of Greek, um, the, the key words in First Peter are um, prognosmenos. We know we, hear, we talk about prognosticating yes. when we're talking about the future. I think it comes from this Greek word prognosmenos and phanerophes. Probably, again, I always do apologise when I try and quote foreign languages. <laughs> I probably just murdered those two words. But um, the prognosmenos bit is God's foreknowing. And the phanerophes is, is the appearing, the, the causing Jesus to appear. So, the birth of the Messiah was a transition from being foreknown by God to being made known to men. Foreknown by God before his, his um, creation inside Mary and his birth. And then after that he was made known to men. And Harnack says the Jewish and Greek views of this are as wide apart as the poles and um, that quote's taken from uh, yeah the history of dogma volume 1 um, I think page 138 